So we're just here in Bridge North, um, a spot a lot of people recognise, they come walking along here. This is where you live. That's right. And uh, flooded again. Yes, really sadly, the second time in less than a year, we we're just getting back on our feet with down tools in December to have a relax for Christmas. And then unfortunately in January, the water came back in the house. Yeah. The, um, now people who kind of listen to the radio and you know, we'll hear this, we've got the specialist out, we've got environment out, blah, blah, blah. People might think you've been inundated with help and support and advice. Not quite so the case, you were I'd telling me. I'd say that was the case, but unfortunately we've had nobody, uh, any specialists sent to us or to offer advice. Um, I haven't even seen anybody from the council personally, from Shropshire Council. Um, the Bridge North Town councillors have been helpful, but we've had no specialist advice. Um, because that's because there are, there is stuff, isn't there? Like you can get floodproof kitchens, use dirt and certain type of stuff for your flooring. There, you know, specialists have got knowledge, but I'm kind of astounded that you yeah. haven't people haven't been in touch and even even just advised you. We've you know. had to research everything ourselves in the last year. Um, you know, and we're learning new things all the time, but we're not specialists. Yeah. Fortunately, my husband does like researching things so yeah. the whole of the redesign has been down to him really yeah but we haven't had anybody to help us and we would really welcome some specialist advice yeah they um, now are you eligible for grants you know to help you out and cover the costs we are eligible but to try and get that money is like uh trying to get blood out of a stone shall i say yeah um we're, we've been on the list we're on a backlog with thousands of people the list is covers all over shrewsbury the whole of shropshire so there's a huge backlog of people waiting on that list yeah. that are eligible for money for flood resilience but at the moment we haven't had anything none of us along the row have had anything yeah and even then we're talking like we're not talking tens of thousands are we uh five thousand pounds is what each house is allocated for flood resilience and flood recovery but you were I saying say, just just to do your patio door is three three thousand thereabouts, isn't it? Just to buy a it? flood gate for that will be three thousand pounds, yeah. and we've spent tens of thousands on yeah. this yeah. ourselves. Now people might say, oh well, you live by the river, it's going to happen. But of course, when you you know when you sign up to living by the river, and you do like living yeah. here, you're not going to move. That's it. You kind of base it on how many times you think you're going to get flood but this these last couple of years have been you know particularly difficult haven't they well, a lot of floods. when you live by a river you know that it's the payback isn't it you are going to have these problems but it hadn't flooded badly since the year 2000 and then yeah. last year obviously was the really bad flood we've flooded three times in two weeks yeah. and then this year it's flooded again so it feels like this is going to be happening more often so we really need help and advice and support well i mean we've heard people from the environment agency saying you know they have to look at where where the money's best spent and it would be difficult to put a barrier up in bridge north but yeah you know, there, there are a few residents kind of as i've been going about that we we kind of worked out roughly in the town i might be wrong on this possibly 10 or so houses were affected it's, it's only a bit of a handful really it's not a huge amount in bridge north so i mean you, you, you would you would think there'd be a you know, instead of millions of pounds that they can't afford to spend on defences, surely there'd be a bit more in the kitty, more than £5,000 for, for 10 of you, well, you know what I mean? You, you would think, you perhaps would I'm putting so. you on the spot a bit there. but uh, No, you would hope so. You would hope that um, all the money that's always been announced, you know, by the government on the TV, um, that we'd see some of it and we'd maybe see more than 5,000 or at least, at the very least, an expert, a specialist to come and advise us if we're doing the right thing yeah, and yeah. what we can do next. Yeah. But at the moment, we're sort of out on a limb. No plans on moving then? You do love it here? Absolutely not. We love living by the river. I mean, 95% of the time, more than that, it's absolutely delightful. It's a beautiful place to live, especially yeah. in the summer, you know, and watching the nature on the river. So, no, we haven't got plans to move. We'll keep going on <laughs> well done i'll let you get back to your cleaning take thank care you. thank you very much so yeah this is that other shed so we can see in here you had a that was a fridge and a freezer yeah, was it a tall fridge going? and a tall freezer and then um so that's just another write-off again gone, is it yeah. and all your furnishings garden yeah, I mean, furniture and i had some new garden furniture as well and that's all been submerged unfortunately yeah. What, what would you estimate the cost of, of the damage this time? I don't know if you've had a chance to uh, kind of... It's probably upwards of 20,000. Yeah. Yeah.
So we're just in the shed here and uh, you were just saying a, a brand new lawnmower this was? We had a new lawnmower because last year's got ruined in the flood yeah. so we, we invested in quite an expensive nice one but it's so heavy that my daughter and myself lifted it as high as we could but we couldn't get it any higher than that so so that looks that's like that's a sh yeah, yeah that shot as well so i mean this is the thing this is where all your your safe storage is supposedly well we lifted it i lifted everything as high as i could yeah um, that one's managed to survive the cheap one yeah but um like the saw under here look there's a really nice saw that's all going to be ruined yeah uh, so there's quite a lot of damage and there's another shed behind this one with a fridge and freezer in they um, turn themselves on the side so so I mean we can see it's, everything's up in arms at the minute yeah. you've got um, industrial equipment here this is cleaning equipment uh, and... this is dehumidifier we've got two of those with they're sort of rented for a few weeks just to get all the moisture out of the walls and yeah. from the subfloor so just talk us through some of the measures you, you've took already in terms of flood prevention inside yeah, here. Yeah, so what we did was we knocked all the walls down internally so yeah. it's completely open. Shall we walk plan, through and yeah. And we tiled all the floor. So obviously and, taking the walls out that stops it pulling in certain areas, it doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and um, we've tiled all the floor with underfloor heating, yeah. which is now drying out the subfloor. Yeah. And then the hope is, and this is what happens, the water comes down and we brush it down and it pours down to the sump at the front of the house and so it pours down into the ground there. So to a, to a novice who doesn't know what a sump is, basically that's a, a place you can push the water through and there's a pump going to pumping back out, that's is that right? absolutely right. So um, we've sort of built a little what would you call it a little void underneath with yeah. two holes the water pours in it pours down and then the pumps pump the water back out outside again and that's the way we manage it so how much do you reckon you've spent up till now on, on flood I prevention like, i wouldn't like to say but it is tens of thousands tens of thousands yeah, yeah. and you were saying that it, it has had some effect there's, there's some of the properties along the road that haven't um, took those measures yet and they they did have a lot more water coming in they yeah? did so we have managed to deal with it this time one night last year when we were under a foot of water yeah. but this year we've managed to keep it just under two inches yeah. so it hasn't affected the kitchen cupboards um and we've managed to get all the furniture up so we've we're really happy it's a success yeah. this year so we can see just out here we've got some of the, the furniture and that that you've you've had in a it's just been damaged written off yeah yes that's right and uh, your, your plans are because it comes up from the back doesn't it initially it does because the ground is low around the back so yeah. it comes all the way and creeps up you watch it creeping up right up to the back doors and that's where it comes in the house got yes yeah, so we've they're just so your plans at the next stage at the minute i mean you've obviously done a, a lot as we've been discussing but you're going to be build out basically like a, a wall that's going to act as a dam is that what right what we're hoping to do is build a wall across this fence come all yeah. the way across here and round the side and we're hoping to keep the water out that way that's the plan that for the next phase yeah day two got myself some waders and not looking great bifold doors are holding for now pretty incredible level hasn't gone up too high unfortunately <coughs> skirting board tiled skirting board started to come away in some places which is unfortunate Um, pump still pumping out, um, but at the moment it's filling up faster than we want it to, so we're going to have to just um, see if the water recedes quicker than the pumps filling up. Very, very unfortunate. Just about saving the kitchen cupboards. Water is touching the fridge freezer, but it's not actually gone inside as yet. working now 
still not enough. So we need to go and get a sick pump. So the gate's letting water through, unfortunately. But look at the level outside. Incredible. 